is Squish As Compressor by Bondi FX. Talking about compression is a tricky thing because so frequently it feels like you have to kind of go back to first principles when talking to guitar players about this effect. Um, that is not to disparage guitar players out there who are watching this video who don't understand compression, or even to disparage those who do and feel slighted by the accusation. This is coming from somebody who uses a lot of compressors, has a lot of hard, com hard opinions on compressors, and still often finds himself completely outside of his depth in terms of knowing why he likes certain compressors and what it is that they are doing. So if you are somebody who needs a cursory understanding of compressors, who clicked on this video, liked what they heard in that intro song, but wants to understand kind of the basics and the broad strokes of what a compressor does and why you as a guitar player probably need one more than you think you do, I'm gonna link to a video I did down below talking about that. But today let's talk about the Squish Ass Compressor by Bondi, what it is, what makes it stand out, and why it is one of the best compressors I've ever used. But first, let's go back in time. This is the 2026 by Bondi FX, their original compressor offering. And this was a fairly niche compressor. You saw it in some decent corners of the internet, but it was never the super broad appeal compressor. You didn't see it on like everyone's board, but it was one of those effects, and you've played something like this before, where you get the one that you like dialed in, and then you kind of feel like you cannot replace it with something else. The 2026 really felt like a lot of people's very favorite compressor, and the kind of accept no substitutes kind of effect for those who had found it. And I totally understand why. This is a compressor that has no blend control, and yet for a long period of time was an always on compressor for my rig. Uh, overdrive, distortion, clean tone, I had this thing running all the time. And that's a rare thing for me in the last couple of years. Uh, somebody who has kind of shirked a lot of always on sensibilities for pedals in general. This functioned really well as an always on. And for transparency, this is not my compressor. This is a buddy of mine who I have been borrowing for, I think over a year at this point. And I hope he doesn't see this video and remember that I still have it. I am sorry, Jordan. The 2026 was really interesting because it featured, like I said, no blend control, but an attack, a release, an ability to automate both, the, both of those things, as well as a profoundly transparent tone in this thing that made it such an effective always-on compressor. But the 2026 has been discontinued for a while, and people have been waiting with bated breath for the anticipated follow-up, the Squish As, and this is a major improvement in a lot of ways. This is a spiritual successor to the 2026. This is a incredibly transparent, incredibly low noise for VCA compressor. And it has a handful of under the hood and on the face improvements and adjustments that make it one of the best always on compressors you can get. For example, we have added a blend control, which is incredibly nice. Uh, I'm somebody who for a long time didn't really value a blend control in compressors. And over the last two years or so have really come around on the concept and this compressor makes full use of it and we'll talk about kind of why the blend control on this is so particularly useful a little bit later. Like I said, the Squish As has foregone attack and release as controllable parameters on the face of the pedal in favor of a program dependent approach to uh, the kind of speed of the compressor. But it's done in a really interesting way. Like I said, the attack on this thing is program dependent. And what that really means is a lot of incredibly complicated math balancing your sensitivity with your ratio. Um, you can go on Bondi's blog if you want to read kind of the deeper summary of this stuff and really get into the charts and the math behind how your attack and your release are set in this pedal. But I can give you the digestible broad strokes of what's effectively happening here. Effectively, your attack is program dependent. It is set to a speed that will vary depending on your input playing dynamics and how far over your sensitivity you go, or effectively, how far past your threshold you are. The farther above your threshold you go, the faster it will attack in very musical ways. And it's worth knowing that all this happens before the ratio is applied. So however that ratio is set for your compressor, that will impact how this program dependent attack behaves 
in kind of the output of the pedal. But effectively, at a two to one compression ratio in this pedal, going something like three dB over your, over your sensitivity threshold will result in uh, compression taking about 42 milliseconds. Going about six dB over, uh, your attack will take about 20 milliseconds. And if you're going like 20 dB over, it will take as little as five milliseconds. Like I said, that kind of like ramps faster, giving you a very even keeled attack across your spectrum. That is all based on something like a two to one compression ratio. You can think of that compression ratio as a force multiplier on that program dependent attack uh, kind of like algorithm. So if you have that sensitivity set so that your soft picking is 3 dB over and your hard picking is 20 dB over and you can expect those kind of 42 milliseconds down to 5 milliseconds at that 2 to 1 ratio, taking this up to something like a 20 to 1 ratio will multiply that and create much faster attacks for both of those speeds. Like I said, the broad strokes there are lower compression ratio and only a little bit over your threshold is your slowest possible attack. High compression ratios and going far over your threshold is going to result in your very fastest attacks, which helps cut down on transients. It helps keep things feeling very natural, musical, and organic in the world of compression. But conversely, that release will always be relatively slow compared to your attack. So like at that two to one compression ratio, uh, you're going to release at about eight milliseconds per decibel. Uh, whereas at a 20 to 1, it will be about 4 milliseconds per decibel. And that is, of course, going to be a lot slower than the attack is. Once again, giving you a very, very even release, a very even amount of sustain that never feels artificial, which I really, really appreciate. And like I said, when you factor that into that blend control, it results in the ability to create incredible amounts of sustain, squash, and control dynamics without creating something that feels overly quacky unless you absolutely want it. One of the other things that makes this compressor such a compelling always-on compressor and such a great even compressor is uh, it doesn't boost low notes. It doesn't boost the quiet parts of your signal like a lot of compressors can. Frequently compressors can get kind of pigeonholed as this thing that makes the quiet parts loud and the loud parts quiet, which can be valuable for some compressors and for some compression environments, but this is a compressor that solely brings your loud stuff down to that threshold using that sensitivity control uh, at a rate and at a level of aggression as determined by that ratio. And what that results in is both a very, very low noise compressor, which is so nice, but also it results in something that gives you a lot of control over your overall output using that output control on the other side of the pedal. Because you are using sensitivity and ratio to compress the loud stuff, but not bringing the quiet stuff up, this will bring down the overall volume of your guitar if you don't use that output to compensate. So that output is going to be crucial in keeping an even tonality and a predictable response from your drive pedals or your amplifier, but in a way that doesn't completely ruin your dynamics and in a way that doesn't add a bunch of unwanted noise to your drive pedals or your amp gain to come afterwards. And finally, you have a tone control. And that tone control is amazing on this compressor because it only applies to the compressed signal in this device. And the reason that's so nice is if you want that very kind of the 1975 plucky, bright, you want that sparkle that some people want out of a compressor, you can dial that in with that tone control without losing a very natural low end response of your dry guitar that can kind of be blended to taste in that blend control. Conversely, if you're playing something finger picking and you want that evenness of a compressor, but you also want some like kind of mellow tonality, by rolling back that tone, you can also cut some highs, reduce some of that sparkle, and really create something kind of very mellow and relaxed sounding. I'm a big fan of optical compressors, both for their tonality and also for the kind of visual cues of how compression is acting upon your signal. And the inclusion of a VU meter on a VCA compressor like this is incredibly great, especially as you're fine tuning that blend of sensitivity and ratio, examining how that program dependent attack and release are acting upon your signal. You can use this as real time feedback. You can really, without having to know a whole like ton about compressors, find great levels of compression in this thing with a simplified set of controls that doesn't skirt away from deep control over your compression and real-time visual feedback that tells you exactly how your compressor is working. And once again, without taking the quiet stuff and making it loud. 
You have sparkle when you want it. You have transparency when you want it. You have a blend control that gives you the ability to create a very even but natural amount of compression or the ability to create something that is very much compression as an effect in this pedal. You have a, a lot of simplified but robust ways of fine tuning your attack and release with your playing dynamics. This is, in my opinion, a compressor designed to be an always on compressor and it succeeds at that. But it succeeds at something more, in my opinion, which is a compressor that you as a guitar player who maybe doesn't understand the deep lore behind compressors can really get their head around. I recommend that you read John's blog over on Bondi's website about the development of this compressor if you want to kind of hurt your brain a little bit, but in a good way. But I also think that this is a compressor that you can plug in and today feel like you have a strong understanding of what it is doing to your signal and how to get what you want out of it. Let's go to our sound samples. Let's take a look at why I love this compressor. Let's take a look at how you can get those subtle and unsubtle effects out of it. And let's also look at things like the choosing between a high ratio and a low sensitivity or the inverse of that and how both of them will impart a lot of compression on your signal, but in very different ways. Because I think, because I think understanding how to use your compressor will give you a giant leg up in finding album ready tones. So let's get into it. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Balaguer Ambient Select Espada into the 29 Pedals Yuna, the Jam Pedals Rattler, the Bondi Effects Squish As, the Bondi Delmar, and Sick As. From there we go to my Echo Fix Chorus Echo EFX3, back to our pedal board for the Benson Delay and the Strymon Flint. We then go to our amplifier, which is the Matchless Lightning 15, and uh, our Universal Audio Aux Box. Here is our dry tone. <laughs> So I've got the amp set pretty subtle. It's a, it's a fairly low headroom amp, but we've got the volume down a little bit to try to hang a little bit more closely in that clean tone area. And uh, we're obviously using single coils for these sound samples just so that you can get a little bit more of that dynamic squish with, uh, with the compressor. So the way that we're gonna do things here is uh, gonna be pretty straightforward. We've got mix at full wet right now. Uh, we're gonna activate the pedal, use our output control to kind of find unity with our dry tone because we're gonna get a little bit of reduction via compression right off the bat. Uh, and then we will play through the ratio control and that sensitivity control before getting into a mix of uh, tone and then finally that blend for reintroducing your dry signal underneath that compression. As you can hear, at minimum, you're getting basically no compression. You've got a ratio of one to one effectively, uh, and it's basically just not going to compress at all. But very quickly, you get up into a two to one and a three to one uh, space that will start to offer just that that kind of like light kiss of compression and uh, and just kind of dynamic control.
talking here, we are getting a lot, a lot of squish there. And that's just because the compression ratio is so high right now. You can really hear as I dig in, uh, like the lighter you play, especially with that threshold set a little bit higher, you can kind of play around those dynamics, even at really extreme amounts of compression, like uh, like kind of like the, the, the limiter that we're at right now, that kind of infinite to one ratio. still get those very normal sounding notes. Or that absolute like squash. But uh, to get more compression out of something like the squish as isn't just a matter of turning up your ratio. You maybe don't want that complete squish, but you do want a fairly aggressive amount of compression. Uh, that's where that ratio or that threshold control comes in, uh, your sensitivity. Uh, and so we can bring our compressor a lot more subtle. which now feels a lot more natural. But by increasing or decreasing that threshold, uh, your sensitivity control will, will, def will determine kind of how hard you have to hit, how much incoming signal you have to offer up to get that, compress that compression. As you can hear right now, I am digging in. And we're not really hitting that compressor at all under the current circumstances. Noticing that this sounds like almost a more aggressive amount of compression than uh, the higher the higher sensitivity or the lower sensitivity and the higher ratio, and that's because uh, the kind of like reduction ratio gets really aggressive depending on how many decibels you go above the uh, the kind of knee that it's looking for here, and so you can get very different flavors of light or heavy compression by fine tuning your kind of preferred balance between those two parameters. So here would be like a really low compression ratio down close to a two to one uh, style compression ratio. But with our sensitivity set incredibly, incredibly high. And you'll notice that We are hitting the compressor with those uh, softer notes. But they don't sound overly squashy versus being able to like really dig in. But that still doesn't squash the way that that super high compression ratio does. And you can listen to that if I, if I kind of crank the ratio right now. And even now, those really soft notes, you can hear them compress really aggressively as well because the ratio is so high.
And that right there is the benefit. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is what I call terrible two hand tapping. I guess probably most people listening to it would call it terrible two hand tapping, but, uh, I've been a big fan for a long time of kind of a low rent, slow moving emulation of like kind of the Yvette style two hand tapping where you just kind of like pick through chords with both hands and a byproduct of me trying to do that is I'm not very precise and uh, and I don't have a great sense of like technique for on for like hammer-ons and pull-offs in that context a high ratio and a high sensitivity like this can actually be really useful for making every one of those soft notes uh, kind of ring as strongly as your kind of like left hand traditional notes that will feel more full in that context. Uh, so what I want to do right now is I'm going to turn the compressor off. I'm going to do some of that tapping, bring in the compressor how it is, where it's way too aggressive, hear it again, and then dial that blend back a little bit so that we get some of the natural feeling of our actual guitar, but with the kind of support and scaffolding of that compression for those softer notes getting brought forward in the mix. As you can hear, it sounds really unnatural, but all of the notes are very even and present, which is, you know, the thing that is hard to do if you're bad at tapping. Yeah, it is, it is easy mode for bad tapping. And uh, I like easy mode for bad tapping because I'm bad at tapping. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the real benefit of having that kind of combination of ratio and threshold because you want those softer notes in that context to kind of pull closer to the forefront. But you also don't want the ratio too low or else they won't come far enough to the forward, but you also don't want the ratio too high or else no amount of dry tone being brought back in will make it sound natural. But it's kind of like the inverse of what a lot of traditional uh, compressor uses in this context would be, uh, focusing a little bit more on uh, your dry tone feeling very natural and normal, but just adding a hair of sustain under, under your like kind of single notes. Um, yeah, it's it's two different routes through the same compressor for very different ends, which is really cool. Let's play a little. So let's play around a little bit more with that blend of sensitivity and uh, ratio. But let's go ahead and do it with just a little bit of that dry guitar brought back in. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is almost like the opposite sound. It's a much higher threshold where all you're doing is getting a hair of dynamic control at the top versus something that is meant to really bring those low notes to the forefront. But even without overdrives, we can just activate our single coil tone into our amp a little bit more. You don't need necessarily like a little boost pedal or a low gain overdrive with a really well tuned compressor.
And again, when we talk about kind of finding those balances between the ratio control and that sensitivity, this is a great example of that. We could go ahead and crank that blend up and showcase how kind of egregious the amount of compression we are applying to our signal is right now. bit of like quack that comes with a really squishy compressor like this. But that blend control has such a great uh, character to it. The, the way that the wet and the dry are mixed together is so effective that at low settings like that, you get a very natural sounding uh, signal, but with added kind of sustain and presence. Again, if you're kind of a vaguely sloppy player, like I tend to be, the different, like those transitions from picking through chords to some sort of like embellishment can feel a lot more controlled and a lot more kind of focused this way. Squish Ads just really is one of those beautifully transparent and even keeled compressors, but there is a benefit that allows you to kind of take it beyond something like that, which is that tone control that we have yet to really touch on. Uh, let's take that blend way back up and find a more neutral sounding amount of compression so that we can kind of play more, more obviously with that tone control. I really love about the tone control in the Squish As is that it is only applied to the compressed signal. So if you have that blend at minimum, you are getting your kind of like uncolored guitar signal. And as you kind of blend it, you're only getting compressed guitar with the EQ applied while your kind of natural guitar's tonality still shines through. So high blend, let's take the blend back to full right now. So you can now hear we are cutting a lot of lows and, and getting a little bit more treble out of this. But as we reintroduce that dry signal, we are getting our uncolored signal mixed into it as well. But there's still a lot of benefit there, which is that little bit of added sparkle. Like sometimes you want a compressor that has sparkle and sometimes you don't. And this is a great example of being able to kind of blend the exact right amount of that kind of classic compressor sparkle without uh, kind of like overly modifying your overall sound.
which can also be really, really cool uh, if you're running it with overdrive. helpful especially especially on some of those neck positions uh, moments or leaning the exact opposite direction and just wanting something really mellow we would be remiss to not talk about one of the most essential pieces of my kind of early compressor love, which is giving purpose and direction to indistinct finger picking in an ambient context. So let's go ahead, kick on some delay and some reverb and really kind of showcase how you can use a really good compressor like this, especially something with that tone control and that blend to, to kind of keep the integrity of our dry guitar together while adding all that sparkle and that evenness uh, and presence in the context of our Echofix analog tape reverb, that Benson delay, and the flint. <laughs>
If you made it to the end of this, I wanna thank you for watching this video. I hope that you learned something about compressors, guitar, your approach to tonality, how to get better tones. Uh, it is, I've made no secret on this channel, I'm a really big fan of Bondi effects. John and I talk a fair amount. He was instrumental in me being able to kind of share some information about the mechanics of that compressor. Um, we were texting and sending voice messages back and forth and I was banging my head against my desk, kind of like getting my head around that program dependent aspect of the compressor. And I feel like I know a lot more about not just this compressor, but compression in general for having talked to him about it. I highly recommend you check this out or anything else from his lineup. The Delmar is great. The Sickaz is great. Bondi is a great company. I highly recommend you check his work out. And thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. Thank you for kind of watching or subscribing. And if you haven't, please do. Uh, if you wanna to talk to me about this compressor or talk about effects in general, um, I have a Patreon that links to a private Discord for supporters of this channel where we talk music, talk production, talk songwriting, and of course, talk gear. So I will hopefully see you there and until next time.